In today's Madden 21 video, we're going to take a look at one of my favorite games so far in the club series, and that's Clef the God versus Danny for the Bucks Club Championship. What's up, guys? My name is Cody, and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch my YouTube channel today. What we're about to do is we're about to break down some film study on some pro Madden players, but what we do here on our channel is we try to upload videos, different tips and tricks videos that are designed to help you get better at this game. And so if you're interested in getting better at Madden 21, I want to encourage you right now, if you've never been to the channel before, to go ahead and click the subscribe button at the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. I also want to encourage you to join our Discord. That link is in the description as well. we got some other stuff for you uh, down the road. i got actually a really cool offer for you uh, later on in the video, so be sure to stay tuned. But what we're going to do right now is we're going to talk about Danny versus Clef. Now, both players are running Gun Bunch. Both players are running... Uh, the Panthers offensive bunch and the Giants um, defensive book. Now, we actually broke down the entire Carolina bunch in our text message membership, which if you want to do that, uh, join that, you can do that easily by texting me. My number is 812-216-3644 if you want to get that Carolina gun bunch guide. Um, but anyways, you see here uh, with the roster and stuff like that, you got this guy setting up here. And what I want to do is I literally just want to go play by play, and I want to talk about what I'm seeing, why I'm seeing it, and what you can learn from it. There's a lot. We actually have practice mode loaded up as well um, with everything that we need uh, in terms of to be able to uh, give you guys some really good resources as well. So as we're going to go through, we're really going to unpack what you're seeing, you know, what they're doing from this Carolina ebook. Uh, Carolina's playbook is really, really tough. It's really, really good. It's probably one of the, I think it's so far, it's probably the most popular playbook in competitive Madden right now because of everything that it offers you um, from all sorts of different things. But the main play that we're going to see a lot of is double post. Now, Danny actually does something that I have not seen people do in Madden 21, at least to this point. I've seen the route, but I haven't seen it this specific one. And you'll see he's actually going to run his bunch a lot differently than Clef the God will. Now, Clef's going to start out on offense first. I think Clef literally only threw one bad pass this game, and it was on the very last play, um, which is really, really interesting. But Clef the God is one of the best offensive players um, every single year. As you see here, he's got Chad Johnson, Terry McLaurin, Tyreek Hill, Chris Cooley, and Reggie Bush. Now, uh, what you're going to see right here from Clef is this is just a simple uh, flood concept. So I just want to pause it right here, and I want to jump over to game, and I just want to break this down. I thought both these guys played really, really well um, offensively. But basically, it's the gun bunch, uh, bun bunch offset, as you can see right here. And Clef is going to go to this flood concept. And part of the reason is because he's on the middle hash. He needs to get to a hash. Most people like to play their run their bunch to a hash. But as you can see right here, effectively, he's going to have this little quick flat route to the, to the tight end if he doesn't play hard flats. And then if Danley were to play hard flats, then Clef could have hit this little hitch route. He also could have hit the dig. Um, Clef, uh, Danny actually came out in Dime 146 um, in that play right there because Clef was running that three wide receiver set. And so that was just a little bit of, you know, what we're going to see. So Danny kind of did what he was supposed to do as far as going to that, that down 146 ends up getting instant pressure. And what you'll see here is he's automatically going in and putting Vernon Davis in at that slot receiver position to prevent that edge pressure from happening. Now, Clef did have the, um, he did have the little hitch route open uh, had he, because he was facing a cover two, right? So he was facing a cover two. So you'll see right here, if it's cover two, um, you're going to have one of those two routes open. Okay, so just wanted to show that to you. Um, now we're going to jump over here to second and ten. As you can see right now, Danny's coming out in two, four, five, double A gap. Now again, Clef loves the flood play. Clef, Clef will run a lot of flood in this game. But what you'll see right here, actually I think he's going to go to just a simple concept. Um, now I believe he does have slot apprentice on Chad Johnson. So what you'll see is he's actually going to put him on a corner route. And essentially he's running this dig. And this is part of the reason he calls flood, because it has this 10-yard dig route, right? So he's got that dig, he's got the flat here, he's got the slant, and he's got the corner route right over here. Now, I don't know why he misses this, but he doesn't hit the running back, um, at least not where we want him to hit him. He ends up holding the ball a little bit here, and is going to end up scrambling with Josh Allen for a couple of yards. So that's going to bring up third and 10. Now, what Danny's going to do is you'll see he's, he should be in – if he's not in dumb 146, he's in 245 double A gap. And Clef is going to kind of be doing a lot of the same things. But right here, Clef is going to go to double post with the motion over slant. 
and we'll break that down pl that play down right after this but you see Danny goes to some max coverage and that C route is able to uh, able to get open so I want to come over here to gameplay here and I just want to break this down for you um, double post is one of the most effective plays in Madden it's probably a lot of people would tell you that it's the best play in the game um, it's the most it's got a lot of different options uh, and a lot of different things that it can do. But as you saw here, Danny was coming out in this 245 double A gap, cover one hole, playing a little bit of max coverage defense, right? And effectively what Clef did was he simply took his tight end, put him on a little flat route right there or a little out route, motioned over that slant. So now he's got a slant and a flat combo on the right. And then he's got that C route and flat route combo on the left. And he's got that double post backbreaker route right over the middle. And so really what he actually ended up doing is because if you have a route running of over 90 or higher, your guys are going to do a lot better against man-to-man -man coverage. And so what you'll see right here is Mike Evans um, was able to torch that man-to-man -to -man coverage to the outside. The other thing that was really interesting was Danny, I believe, played underneath flat coverage. He didn't have his flats put back at 20-plus um, yards. They were only at, like I think, probably either 5 or 10. And so because of that, it allowed this window to be wide open for Clef. Okay, so we'll jump back over here to gameplay and keep rolling through. Um, and we'll just keep watching here. I mean, there's just a lot to see in this game. Um, Cliff actually looks really, really good for the first uh, several possessions here. Uh, but what you'll see here, flipping the bunch, he's going to go to PA Dick Fork. Now, he's trying to get a cover three beater. You see he put that corner route on that slot apprentice uh, over on this side. Clef, in my opinion, and, and may, this is just kind of one of my observations with Clef, unfortunately. Um, when I watch him play, I don't see him take his flats a lot. Like, if you watch Young Kiv play, Young Kiv will always take his underneath if you give him the underneath. With Clef, it's a little bit different. Clef is kind of that guy that wants to make the big play. That's just kind of the vibe I get. He ends up honestly getting bailed out uh, right here. Uh, T. Davis goes on to say it's one of the luckiest plays uh, in his entire Madden career uh, that he's ever seen Clef have. Um, I wouldn't go that far. I would just say he got, you know, he got lucky and he knows it. Uh, right here, I don't know how that, that shoestring tackle was incredible, but he audibles down into the stretch. And um, this is primarily because what you see a lot of bunch players do, um, and this has just been my my uh, hunch, and goes Madden is really the, one of the only people I felt like that runs Carolina bunch that had a really, really good red zone offense. Most of them just run the ball. And, uh, and as you'll see here, Clef's going to do that as well. He's going to go to this fullback dive um, just because of the defense that Danny happens to be in. Danny's actually able to blow it up here from, I believe, nickel 335 wide. Um, the reason Clef is coming out in that single back wing stack um, is what he's done is he's put in tight ends and backs on that left side, as you can see. So he can audible from that stretch to the fullback dive. So now you get a fullback dive, a power row, a stretch, and a toss if you want all of those uh, different running plays. Now right here on fourth and one, um, I'm not sure. I, I'm, I'm interested in kind of the route combination here from Clef. But what you're going to notice here is he just streaks them. And uh, when you streak people in the in the red zone, you see how they get to the back and they kind of the back of the end zone, they kind of stutter. That gives you that opportunity if they run commit, if they bring the coverage down, uh, to be able to hit that over the top of that. And that's what Clef does to get on board uh, and to get on top early for seven points. So Danny really, um, all in all, you know, I, I, I don't really count that seven as a great drive. Um, Danny had moments of success. In my opinion, Clef got really lucky on that throw and then was able to convert in the red zone, which you, you got to admit he did convert in the red zone, and converting in the red zone is a big deal in 921 if you can really capitalize in that red area on either offense or defense. I think that's really the key to the game. But uh, but anyways, so Danny's going to come on offense. Now what's going to be interesting here is Danny is going to run the same offense, right? But he's going to run it very, very differently, right? People run Carolina, but a lot of people will you know tell you that you, know, you could basically run Carolina multiple different ways. Now we break down in our text message membership, which to get that, all you got to do is text me uh, my cell number is in the description. It's also uh, it will also flash at, at different points as well throughout the video uh, whenever we go over to gameplay. But my number is 812-216-3644. So just shoot me a text message if you want to get that uh, that material. But we're going to dive in here to Danny now. So 
uh, really bunch offset, right? Carolina bunch offset. Now, Danny's going to run um, a lot of the play curl flat, which I haven't seen a lot of people run that play. Um, that was actually – it's actually one of the plays that we broke down in my New England Patriots offensive ebook, which you can pick up in the description as well. Um, I think curl flat – now, this is a play that Michael Skimbo ran two years ago. And Madden – I believe it was Madden, uh, Madden 19 when he won – um, his first, uh, when he won, I think the Madden challenge and the curl flat play is actually really, really good. It's really, really good this year, especially the way Danny runs it. We're going to get into it, uh, later on in the game and kind of show you what he's doing, uh, with that route. And it really works well when you have a 90 or overall guy, um, as you got Chad Johnson right there running it. What I also liked about Danny, um, studying his offense a little bit here is he runs a lot of mesh. He runs a lot of double drags. Like on that first play you saw, and there, here he's going to it. You see this corner route? Uh, you see right here this corner route to Chad? That's a, that's a curl flat. And then he's going to run, I believe he'll run two underneath drags here. Let's see. He's going to run that motion over. And he's actually going to run, let's see here. He actually runs a drag and an in, which I was really interested with that route combination. I don't know if I feel about that one, but he is able to get separation and able to move the ball down the field. Danny does a lot more um, offensively, in my opinion. I think he does a lot more of the mesh and the, the levels concepts than most people that I've seen play this year do. Uh, most people aren't running this. Most people are running hitches or they're running motion slants. Or, you know, you, you know Danny uses a lot of drag routes, uh, which I found really, really interesting. Now, right here, Clefson, down 146. Danny's going to go to HB base. Um, that's just obviously a run that he has labbed up for when the situation when Clef does go to that. And then you see right there, Danny's going to go ahead and he's going to sub out that wide receiver so that he can get um, – so that he has to force Clef to come out in this right here, right? Um, otherwise, Clef can get away with running down 146 pretty much all game. So you see again, this is that curl flat setup. Motion this guy over. He's got the smoke screen on this side. And then he's basically got this nice corner on. If you watch this corner on the left, see there's that separation. Danny actually threw that a little bit late, as you can see the 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 wipe of the face there. Um, and we'll go over that here in just a minute. But I want to see if he I want to see if he actually hits the route, and we'll talk a little bit about it. But Clef right here, third and seven, he should be sending the gas. I think Clef will probably send the goons on on this third and seven. And see here's that motion over. He's got that in, little flat, and. Nothing open, man coverage able to take care of it, and he has to throw it away. Which brings up a fourth and seven for Danny. And that curl flat play doesn't work every single time. It just works a lot. Um, it, it works a lot more than average corner routes. Most corner routes work probably 30% of the time. This probably works 50 to 75% of the time against man coverage. It's going to be a one-play touchdown. Um, right here, he's going to go to a man beater. Um, because of this down and distance, he's kind of anticipating Clef's going to dial up the goons. So he's going to PA Dick Fork with that motion over a uh, little, little post route. Clef knows that, so he's going back on it, and um, and Clef's able to get the stop. So Clef's going to get the ball back. Before I go over to the next uh, play for Clef, I want to jump over to game, and as you can see, my number here is in the top left-hand corner of your screen. But I really want to show you this, uh, this situation that we saw in this game develop. And this is actually, uh, you'll see Danny's going to hit this route for a touchdown later on in the game. But this is basically what you're seeing. And obviously he flipped it because the bunch, you want to run your bunch to the wide side of the field. But this is curl flat, okay? Curl flat. Now, uh, you want to make sure that you have a receiver running it that has the slot-o-matic ability. And ideally he has over 90 deep route running, right? If he has over 90 deep route running, it's really going to help this route. But basically what's going to happen here is all you're going to do is you're going to smart route that route. Now, he had tight end apprentice on uh, on his tight end, so we're going to use our hot route master to put our tight end on a post. And then he had Scotty Miller coming on a drag and basically had a little levels, con not even a levels concept really, just kind of a little double end concept here on the left. But effectively, if this thing gets that separation, he's gonna, if he gets that instant win animation, that's where Danny's Danny's going to hit that. Now, if Clef is running man blitz uh, from this, then you would probably see Danny hit either his in route, you know, one of his quicker reads, maybe his probably not his post route, 
but maybe this little quick drag or even this route right here to the back was actually a really good successful read against man-to-man -man coverage. So what that's going to do is it's going to get him out of the blitz. But really what I want to show you is if you watch this route to Chris Godwin, it doesn't always get separation. But the times that it gets separations are really, really critical. And it will get a lot more separation if you have that 90-man coverage threshold. But as you see, it's just a lob ball, click on, and it's a one-play touchdown against that press man blitz. And what's really nice about it is let's say that they're playing, let's say that they're playing like backed off coverage or, or just kind of standard uh, coverage. And so what we're going to do is we're going to put our purples out here, right? And we're also going to press coverage out of cover one. So now what you'll see is curl flat, right? You're running your, your same reads here. But if you watch Chris Godwin, here's a, a lot of times he's going to get over the top and that's just an up pass lead as you see. And if I can hit that route, that's a touchdown against max coverage. That route is truly one of Danny's favorite routes. You'll see him go to it over and over again. Let's jump back over here and catch Clef's second drive. So ball is on the 50 midfield, second quarter, four minutes, 55 seconds left. Clef's coming out in bunch, offset, and Danny's still in that two for five delay gap. You see right here, Clef's going to try to bust a run. I was surprised to see how much Clef ran the ball. Um, but anyway, going down to stretch and not too much going on right there. Uh, I was actually really surprised with how much Clef, Clef, Clef hates to run. So that's why I was just, it was, it was weird to see Clef running so much and he didn't run a ton, but he did run a, a decent amount, but Clef has always been known as a, a pass heavy guy. So he's going cover one hole here. Clef is and setting up a little bit of a max coverage out of cover three now. Uh, with that manned up on the slot. Now, if you watch, uh, or I'm sorry, Danny's running that. Um, so anyway, cover three, Clef, got that pulse right there. Should be coming all the way across. That's actually a really good read. So what Clef did right there, he had a slot apprentice on Chad Johnson. I actually really like what Clef did. And um, effectively what he did was he basically took his, his uh, Chad Johnson, he put him on a post route when Chad was in the slot, and then when you flip the bunch, the routes don't flip, right? So you can basically flip a post route. He could put, like right here, you see, he puts Chad Johnson on this post route right here. See this? He's on a post route now, but he's on the left side of the field because he's flipped it. And then he's just going to run this little, uh, you know, little man beating principle. And Danny actually ends up sending heavy, heavy pressure at Clef. And he's able to get the sack. That's the beauty of the mid blitz. You don't know if it's coming or if they're playing coverage and, um, and right there, Clef paid the price for that. So now second and 19, you'll see here, he's in flood. Now watch. Here he's going to audible down, maybe. Let's see here. But if he puts Chad Johnson on a post route, and see here, he puts him on a cross. This is critical. Puts him on a cross, now watch. He's going to flip the play. Actually, he's not. He's going to keep him on it and has to take a timeout. This was actually something very, very interesting from Clef, and he did it a lot of times out of the flood concept. It doesn't necessarily have to be flood. It could be other things, but I'm actually going to show this uh, I actually really liked what he was doing uh, with this. I actually took this. I took this uh, a page out of his book for my own offense. Um, here he's just going to run double post with the motion over slant. See if he can hit, and he does. He hits that nice C route. Clef was a master at that C route. I felt like he did a really good job. When you run that C route to the short side of the field, it actually does really, really good against the a lot of the meta coverages. Uh, but what you'll see here, he's going to go. Let's see. He's a Z spot flipped. He should smart route RB. Let's see. He's got the post route on the left side. And didn't really didn't really like what he saw right there, so he's going to run it down. But Clef will go to that crossing route setup over and over again throughout the game too. And I thought that was one of his more innovative. Clef always comes in with some nice innovative route combinations. I actually really like watching him play for that reason. Um, he's always going to bring something, right? He's always going to bring some kind of innovative combination whether it be all curl or or what he was doing the crossing routes he always has something that's why last year he was running a lot of hot route master as well but anyway you'll notice here he's got that c route watch the c route watch it see it didn't get didn't get open there he was kind of anticipating it getting open he ends up getting, having to take the sack second down and 17 ball on the 19 yard line it's actually a big sack because now clef can't just run the ball um if clef would have completed a little three yard little five yard route uh, he probably would have been able to to run the ball. 
But anyway, here you see the, the flip of the double post to the wide side. He's got that out route right there. He's probably going to get some motion slant. Um, flips it one more time. Uh, not for any routes or anything, just because of the look. And ends up having to take a delay game. See, in my, my opinion, this is one of the things that Clef will do from time to time. You actually, if you watch him play, he'll get a lot of delay of games. He'll do things like that where, where like, it just – I'm not quite sure what we're seeing, right? Uh, but anyway, he does put Chad Johnson on a smart route of corner route. I think that's really interesting. I haven't seen a lot of people run this. But let's just watch watch Chad Johnson on this play and just see what happens. This is a smart route of corner route right there. I mean, there's a window to throw that against cover three. But ends up taking his flat check down and is able to uh, keep the ball moving down the field. So now we're at the two-minute warning right here. You know, Clef in this situation really, if he gets up by 14, um, it's not all gravy because Danny gets ball at half, right? But Clef, the, I feel like he really does need to score seven uh, in this situation, just because of just because of what Danny can, you know, obviously double up and whatnot. But here you see he's got that skinny post. This is from Flood, and he has outside apprentice on uh, on uh, Chad Johnson as well. Uh, and he's actually able to hit this running back option route, which I thought was really really good. Um, basically, just smart route of the option route to go. Uh, if you don't know, you can smart route option routes fairly simply. But, you know, I just thought that was a really, really good read by Clef um, running that option route in the post route. I don't I don't know, you know, I don't know how I feel about him running that on the same side. Um, but, but, I mean, it worked out for him well right there, and that option route was able to go. He had the flat, and, and it, it, what was really cool about it was he had that flat route on that side to pull all those zones, leaving that running back basically one-on-one -on -one. had he, you see right here see the drag right there pulling the zone and then he's got the running back in behind it so i thought that was actually a really good concept i just don't know if i would have put a post on that play side as well because they kind of were running quasi together but anyway let's watch danny here a little bit and see what he's gonna do you're gonna see more mesh post uh, i just think it's interesting the differences of a bunch too uh but anyway a lot of mid blitz press uh right here let's see what this guy's is he on the out route no he's on the dig I actually didn't like that route combination from Danny. Um, right there, basically, what he did was he ran. It was the all hot routes, right? He put his out. He put his guy on a corner. Now you're gonna see. This is this is the curl flat play right here. Watch this. Should, should smart route RB. Maybe if I can see him. Yep, smart routes him right there. There's your double that we just showed you this setup. So let's see how this how this goes for him again. Double drags on the same side. This time he's going to throw him on a streak route to clear out zones. That route to Chad doesn't get open. He's got the post route, but he just didn't throw it, and he's going to have to throw it away. But you notice that that's one of his favorite plays, and, and he will go to that. Um, he will go to that over and over and over again. Now, right here, third and one, looks like he's just concerned with trying to pick up the first down here. Going to go to the stretch. Um, two four five double A gap. I think two four five double A gap's okay. Rundy, as you see, Clef's pretty hype about that. Um, Danny, you know, I just, I just didn't like. I don't like the, I don't like the stretch against the mid blitz because when you, when you spread those backers, uh, it's really, really, you know, tough in my opinion. But what you see here, curl flat on that side. Now he's going to leave a curl route here, so just a drag, and see that's what we're talking. about. He misses him. That's a touchdown. That's exactly what we were talking about. Clef knows it. It was a touchdown. That's exactly what we're talking about. And Danny's going to go back to that. He's going to stay consistent with his game plan. I love his mental um, grit and ability to fight through that. Um, you're, you know, you got thousands of dollars on the line, and you miss a wide open touchdown. Not even on Danny's fault whatsoever. I think the receiver just didn't, you know, he, he just didn't react to the ball, which does sometimes happen this year. And so, you know, it is what it is. This is P.A. Dick Fork. I actually really like this route combination from Clef um, with that nice post coming all the way across. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to break this one down for you. I thought this was really good. Danny gets, ends up getting a huge, huge, huge fumble. So Madden does does bless him a little bit. But what I want to do right now is I want to jump over to, to gameplay, and I want to talk about P.A. Dick Fork. So uh, Clef has Slot Apprentice on um, – on his on his guy on the left side right slot apprentice on mike evans so what he does that i think was so smart is he puts him on a post right puts him on a a little post route right here then he's going to flip the play and then <coughs> excuse me 
RB is going to go on a hitch, and then he's going to basically max protect, smart route Miller, and bring him to the left side. What's nice about this is if they're not if they're playing like cover one type coverage, Miller should be open for a little lob pass. As you can see, he gets over the top. Now, if you're mutt and you have better route running, it's going to work even better than what I just showed you. Okay, so do do understand that. The next thing that you saw though uh, from this, and I'll just show you real quick. We'll flip that play and then flip it again. So we flip it, flip it, and now what you're going to see is what if they were in some type of like zone coverage? This is why I thought this was so smart. Uh, this post route to Mike Evans, right? If they were in zone coverage on the left side to take away that route to Scotty Miller, Mike Evans' route is impossible to stop. And as you can see, of course, I throw it right to the – I threw it a little bit uh, too late on that play. But that route is going to cause um, – that route is going to cause Danny's user – to basically have to guard it. So this is a little bit of a shot play right here, but you have that nice little, see how nice that post right is? It's just gonna come right across. And you'll see right here, drags all the way across, um, throwing under pressure, but uh, let me let me just block, let me just, let me just get those stupid defensive linemen out of the way. Practice mode sheds are absolutely unreal right now. Uh, they've been unreal all year, it's just ridiculous. Um, I don't know why Madden does this to us, but they do. So, uh, anyways, you got that post route. You have this route to um, to Godwin. Godwin's going to be just, you know, a check down. You can play maker him, get him open, um, kind of force their the user to come down on this, right? But anyway, he looks to the left, right. That's not open, so he comes all the way back to the left. Now, Danny goes to user that route, but that's why that route is so powerful, and that's why it's so important to have slot apprentice if you're going to run bunch, in my opinion, because. Now you can get a, a dominant post route on the on the solo receiver side that can beat every single coverage in Madden 21. But anyway, Danny gets a fumble there. A um, little bit of a break for him, but again, you have to remember, obviously, Clef has got a plethora of breaks up to this point, um, and so Clef can't be mad at that whatsoever, and he's not. Um, he's able to adjust here. But Danny's going to get the fumble, which is huge. And so now what his job is is to go down and try to get some points on the board here. Ideally, you get seven. He might, you know, he might have to settle for three, but 53 seconds, three timeouts. You got to be feeling confident if you're in Danny's shoes to be able to get the ball down and score um, before half. So here, again, there's that curl flat out of that. You see there, RB's wide open. This time, Danny doesn't drop it and is able to score a touchdown. Um, very, very nice. Very, very nice. Um, now, one of the things I want to show you is, and, and I don't know that Danny's going to go to this setup, but let's just jump over here to gameplay. And I just want to show you this uh, out of curl flat. I'm going to jump back out, grab it, and then come out and show you. But, like, if let's say you're on the short side of the field, right? If you have your bunch on the short side of the field, let's say you're in curl flat, and you have a slot apprentice, right? What you can easily do with this, let me come out in, like, just two for five, double A gap. Maybe, if I can get to it. Uh, two for five delega. So what you could do is kind of use two principles and within one here. Um, what you can do is you can easily go ahead and flip it right there, just like that. Then then you smart route Godwin, right? Put your drag out there, and then now what you've got is you've got a nice little combination, you know, as well. Maybe a little underneath mesh post. Um, this is a really really good route combination right here. But this now you have that nice post route to Mike Evans. So. Anyways, let's jump back over here to game. Clef now has the ball back on offense. He's trying to go down and get three. The only problem is he doesn't have a whole lot of time. Um, but what you'll see here is he's going double post, got the double drags, um, and basically just quick hiking him and does a good job. Now, what I would do is fake spike here, or, or not fake spike, but just spike it. He does. So he's got he's got one play. If he can get out of bounds, he has it. So it'll be interesting to see what route combination Clef's going to come out with here. But basically, it was two quick snaps of double post, get him down to this point. And so right here, he's going to go to flood. I don't know if I agree with this play call, because I just don't see how you're going to... I mean, he does have the skinny post right here, but like, how are you going to get out of bounds? Uh, playmakers him up. I guess he runs with Josh Allen. That's actually good. So he's going to be able to take a field goal, and that actually becomes a huge deal. I just don't agree with the play call. I, I, don't, I don't know why... I don't understand the out route. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't feel like that out route was... 
with that out route, it's actually best if you low ball it right on the cut. The problem is that's going to keep that route in bounds. So I would have really liked to see Seth go with some crossing routes on that play, but it works out for him. He ends up going up by 10. That's actually a really, really big field goal, um, and he knows it. I mean, that's a huge, uh, huge, huge, huge field goal. All right, so we're going to jump ahead here to the third quarter. Now uh, Danny is going to get the ball at half, and um, – and let's see here. Oh, we're, we're buffering a little bit here. But it looks like Cliff comes out, plays coverage, and he ends up getting him. It's interesting to see Danny's only 4 for 10. I feel like Danny missed a lot of reads early on in the game. I really do. Um, I just I, I also feel like he didn't get a lot of good breaks. But his ability to stay tough, mentally tough, uh, ends up helping him out in this game. So what you're going to see here is he's going to go to double post. Now, with double post, he's just going to drag here, block the back to pick up any pressure. And ends up, I, I just thought that wasn't a great route. Um, the problem with Vernon Davis, too, is that Vernon Davis doesn't have the best route running, right? So he's not going to get those clean cuts that like a Chad Johnson would. So I just, I don't, I don't know. I don't know about that decision. That's kind of where you have to have him with the way Danny's playing his offense. But I just, I just didn't really like that. So here you see Curl Flat going to go back to it. Smart route that corner out. Now Danny's about to go to a setup that I really like from Curl Flat. Uh, it's actually in our New England ebook, um, and we talk a lot about curl flat in our New England ebook. But basically, what Danny is about to do is he's going to go to a little flood, a uh, little right side flood here. See right there? See that? The inside streak of the tight end is what I like. Um, and you see your motion out. Now, what you see here is that little smart route is going to nice. It does a really good job of pulling that zone. He's got that backside in route coming um, across the formation. I'd actually like to see him turn that into a post route just because of where everything is, is going to end up late, but obviously doesn't do that. Fourth and inches here, he's got the flat, um, ends up taking the C route really nicely done, just takes, taking the flood concept and working it, uh, working it very, very well. So that's going to bring up, let's see here, third down, first and 10. Um, okay, so what you'll see here, first and 10, he should be going to that, yep, going to it again. You see the flat. Now watch, RB hits him late, and you see how it does a good job of getting over a lot of zones. That's why that route is so powerful, and we'll go over that here in just a minute, but I want to keep watching this drive because this is where Danny starts to really, I think, stand up for himself a little bit. Because up until this point, Clef's been really in control of this game. But anyway, he's going to go to double post here um, with that motion over drag. He's got the tight end on a wheel route, which I think is really interesting. I think it's because he knew Cliff was playing a lot of hard flats and ends up hitting that route to Chad Johnson. I think he was starting to pick up on the fact that, fact that Cliff was playing hard flats. Um, what he could have probably done was wait just a little bit longer and could have hit that route to the uh, to the tight end over the top. But anyway, here, this is going to bring up a second five. Cliff's showing man pressure here, showing heavy pressure on this left side here. Um, he's going to go to curl flat. Danny is. Goes to the curl flat concept here, does not get it, but he does get that tight end posted man coverage. And that's why he runs that post to that tight end. Two different routes going in different directions. Um, really nicely well done. Here he's going to go to flood. This was kind of one of his plays that he really liked to run in the red zone. Uh, what you'll notice here is he's kind of sticking with that flat concept here. He's going to go with the crosser to the tight end. Um, just not enough time. Not enough time in the pocket to do that. Clef is sending... You know, everybody, and, and and just was not a good look. Now, on this second and 10, he's going to go to the curl flat, and this is what you'll start to see here. If you watch, um, curl flat was the primary play that he went to all drive. This is where I started to see him run this a lot. Um, he had the back there out, but you see, I mean, Clef is sending everybody. Um, I mean, he is sending everybody. Now, on this third and 10, just watch, watch this route right here. Watch 85. Didn't get open the first couple of times, but... Uh, in a critical situation, Danny's going to trust it, and obviously he sticks with everything else. So he's running a little bit of an inverted levels concept on this right side with that deep dig route. I don't know why, I don't know why, but I just don't really like that read. But anyway, over here, this is what I want to show you: um, able to get that and able to get that over. So the concept that Danny was going with out of curl flat, I got curl flat pulled up here, was a lot of this. Um, he had multiple ways to run it, but this was one of his favorite ways to run it right here. Basically this, right? A flood concept. That's all it is. But what you'll see is if they run man coverage and you get over the top of it, that can be huge. Now, you're not always going to get over the top of it, right? 
But Clef, understand what Clef was doing. He was running a lot of that. A lot of press kev, a lot of put a lot of press man to man coverage, right? So because of that, if he got a step on him, Danny knew it's a touchdown. Or at least a huge play, as you can see over the top. So really, really great lab work by Danny, I thought, and um, was able to get that and, and was able to that was a huge play in the game. Um, that was a huge, huge, huge play in the game. So now Clef's gonna get the ball back on offense. 14 to 17 uh, game now, and it's exactly what I was talking about with the whole idea of doubling up uh, after half. It should really be 14 14, um, but you know, it is what it is. Actually, I think technically, I don't know. I mean, you can't say it should be 14 14 because Clef and Danny have both got breaks in this game. But anyway, Clef is still looking really smooth on offense. I mean, you know, Danny really hasn't stopped him yet. Uh, Danny's actually going to 3-3-5 wide now. He's kind of out of that double-A gap, but you'll see here going to the dive. Uh, I just didn't like that play call from Clef. I, I just really didn't like it because, you know, 3-3-5 wide, that's an easy gap shoot. If you, if you don't have a fullback in the backfield, I would never run a halfback dive. Um, I just wouldn't because it's just it's just too, it's too easy to shoot it. But right here, third and three going to double pose. You should see the C route. C route should be wide open. Yep. So Danny's bringing that, you know, hard flat. And and that's it. I mean, you know, if you're gonna run hard flats, Clef executes that C route really, really well. I think Clef, um, in my opinion, really uh, where he makes double posts really, really good is not just a double post, but it's the it's the C route that he does that I think does a really good job for him. First and ten now. Now watch, he's gonna go to stretch. Now watch this right here. Watch this. You can't shoot as well. Yeah, Danny was able to get it. But in my opinion, that was also some bad run stick by Clef. He'd probably agree with me. But but you can't shoot stretch as well as you can dive from a three three five wide, in my opinion. So that's where I just would have liked to see your third down and one. You need to get one yard. Just run the stretch. That's what I would have liked to see. But that's okay. No problem. Um, obviously, Clef makes more money than I do at this game. So um, we're here to learn from him. But anyway, going to flood right here. Um, good user by Danny. And Clef just kind of, ah, just just take the sack right there. You know, I'd rather just take the sack because now, now you tack on an additional probably 10 yards. Uh, may have just been an extra five yards to what the sack would have been. I just would rather just take the sack right there. Going to double post with the drag and hitting the little underneath route. And I, I feel like Clef has to punt this ball. But you see, I mean, 13 of 13, a buck 90, two touchdowns, like, you can't argue that his offense has been efficient. I just feel like, you know, the the throwaway right there. Um, I just I just would have rather saw him take the sack, and I mean he kind of did in a roundabout way because of the penalty. But now Danny's gonna get the ball back, and um, he's gonna get you know basically the start of fourth quarter. Now Clef doesn't, you know, you want to see that whenever you punt the ball to somebody, you always want that to go out of bounds. You don't want that to be in a bounce because you don't want to risk. The, uh, the uh, potential for Danny to get a big play. But what you should see here is Danny should consistently go back to curl flat. Curl flat's the best play he had in this game. Um, and, and the play that he really ran, I think, the best. But we'll see what he does right here um, on this side here. It's probably flood. It looks like flood. Uh, he's got the crosser here. I, I don't know how I feel about it. This is all hot routed. Um, and it's just going to be, yeah, I just don't like that. I don't like that concept. So what Danny basically did right there was all hot route. It essentially had a flood on the left side with the crossing route to the tight end coming over the top of the in route. I just don't like how those routes run into each other. Um, that's just, you know, for me, I don't like that. Uh, some people play well with that, but I just I just felt like that was not his best um, his best route combination here. Now, Clef comes out in down 146. He's going to go to HB base again, and he's going to get it a huge run. I think he might. He might score on this, uh, or at least he gets a really, really big play. Yeah, he does. He's going to score on it. So that's that's lab work. Clef goes to dime 146. Danny knows, all right, he's going to be in dime 146. I'm going to audible to Y off trail week, and I'm going to run HB base, and I'm going to hit it. And he hit it. Now, I don't think Danny expected a touchdown, but that thing hit, able to get out, and now he's up 17-21. to 21. Clef's going to get the football back. But in my opinion, that's a huge, 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 huge play in the game. Huge momentum shift. And now Danny gets that one possession lead. And now Clef has to go on a drive. And you'll see Clef's going to stand up. Clef's going to fight for himself. 
Clef's going to show everybody why he's one of the best offensive players in Madden. But as you can see, I mean, that's just, that's lab work, man. I mean, that's, you know, again, it, it, it may not hit for a touchdown every time, but if somebody's running down 146, now we all know HB Base can pop that. Um, those pulling guard runs are so good this year. Anyway, nickel 55 wide from Danny. Looks like Clef's going to run a lot of double posts. You'll probably see a lot of double posts in this. Uh, Clef runs a ton of double posts. Double posts is a play he called the most in this game, by far. Um, and he loves to quick snap it. I mean, that, that's, you know, quick snapping double posts is, is kind of the primary way that Clef's going to move the ball. Now he goes down to single back wing flex, going to stretch left. Um, watch Dan. Danny's kind of anticipating stretch left here. Um, but Clef's going to get out and get a couple good positive yards. Brings up a, a second and short, second and inches position. And I feel like Clef, like, looking back at this game, fullback dive here, uh, good call. But I, I just feel like Clef didn't unleash his offense. Um, almost, almost. I don't know if it's right to say that he played too safe or too conservative. I don't know if that's exactly the right wording. But I just feel like Clef's a better offensive player than, and he he was still effective on offense. But I just feel like he's more dominant than he than he actually showed in this game. But anyway, here goes to mesh. I just love that play. I I like that play a lot, and 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 I would have liked to see him run that a little bit more. But that's probably just because I'm a mesh post junkie, and I love that play. It's my favorite play in Madden. Uh, every year so going to double post here um double post again and this is a hitch drag combination uh, which i actually really like there's a c route clef runs out with QB. but i love how locked in clef is i mean you can tell i mean he, you know he might be a little nervous but but really more than anything you can tell there's a lot of poise right now you can tell Clef is locked in. He's focused. So I wouldn't say nervous. I'd just say he's focused right here um, of putting this drive together. He's going to go to that same concept he just ran. That double post, not there. But I love the playmaker up with the hitch to get the user to get out of the way and then runs out really, really nicely. Um, had Danny not gone back on that hitch route, that probably would have been either a touchdown or a first and goal from the five-yard line. So really, really good D. Danny's not doing anything crazy on defense either. Uh, from what I'm seeing, a lot of Mabel coverage. I mean, it's basically Mabel coverage on both sides, and that's it. Um, you know, and, that, and that's pretty much it. Now, right there, that was one of the most dangerous things. Um, that incompletion was, ooh, that was almost a fumble. I can't tell you how many times I've seen that be a fumble in this year's game. Here he's going to the old school setup of mesh post. I don't know why. Uh, actually, I really like this. Yeah, this is the motion over slant. He's got that slant, that seam wheel, hits the slant really nicely and sets himself up in a first and goal situation from the eight yard line. So now, now Clef has about, you know, um, it's not so much that Clef doesn't have time. I mean, Clef has plenty of time, right? It's more so you've got to start thinking about how much, how much time are you going to give Danny if you give him the ball back? Danny has two timeouts right here, as you see. Uh, two minutes left on the clock with 10, uh, 10 seconds left. So Clef is trying to not give Danny the ball back with a bunch of time. In my opinion, that's why you see this run right here. The problem is, the problem is, and again, this is where I, I just don't know if this is, I don't know if it's a product of being too conservative or what. I just don't like the, I don't like him going to the run. I, I, I really don't. Because now you're in a second and 15. And I just, you know, I just don't know. I does, I like taking it to the two minute warning, but like, and I'm sorry, I told you wrong. Uh, Danny has three timeouts. Uh, Clef only has two. So, you know, that's another factor as well because Clef, it, you know, he can't save himself if he gets in a situation where he needs those three timeouts to be able to get the ball back. He can't, he won't get it back. So that's another thing that you've got to be running through your mind here. But look, this wheel's wide open, uh, wide open. I mean, just the, the pocket broke down. Um, that seam wheel would have been a touchdown if he would have had probably another second in the pocket. And he's going to go right back to it. Now watch, watch. Danny sees it, doesn't come back out. That outside third played it really, really well. And now you got fourth and goal from the 14. Now this is where, again, this is where I feel like I just – that's where that run call on first down is coming back to bite Clef. I mean, Clef, I mean, there's just no – it's just going to be hard to score right here. And um, I just don't think he – he didn't do himself any favors on the offensive side of the ball. 
with Kali not running play. And he almost has that in route, but uh, Danny was able to get back on it, take it, and um, able to close this game out. But this was one of the best games that uh, I've seen so far this club series. I thought these were really good competitors. One of the things that I think you should take away from this game is that curl flat play that we talked about. Obviously, that flood play, that double post play, those were all really good concepts to use. But the biggest thing that I took away from this game was, number one, whenever bad things happen to you in Madden, it is so important that you don't lose focus. Just focus on the next play, right? That's what Danny did over and over again, over and over and over again, right? Um, as you see here, him breaking another long run. Number two, be prepared for whatever your opponent might call. So if your opponent's going to call dime one four six, you got to be prepared for that. You got to know what you're going to do in that situation, right? Um, you got to know that you can audible one step over here to the trio and run HB base against some of these heavy blitzes, and you know this might break for you. It won't always break for you, but it might break for you a little bit. So you have things like that. So those are some of my takeaways for this game. What were your takeaways from this game? If you guys want to get my full Carolina bunch offense or my big nickel over G D my big nickel over G defense or my New England guide, any of that stuff, just text me. Um, my numbers at the top left corner is 812-216-3644. But we'll be breaking down more film um, as well. Hopefully you enjoy these videos. If you like this video, be sure to leave a like rating uh, on it below. But what'd you think of the game? What were your takeaways? And uh, yeah, just let me know.